but sometimes we have that gray area. We talked about the general questionnaire last time. Now we'll talk about some of those gray areas that uh, we can expand upon. And those are things that you can do further research if you find uh, a question as to whether someone qualifies as a dependent or as a qualifying child versus a, a dependent. So remember the general process would be, do they qualify as a qualifying child? Because if they do, then you're looking to see if you can get the child tax credit, which would be a higher benefit than not uh, having a child tax credit. If they don't qualify for the child tax credit, then you're seeing if you can get the other dependent credit. On the form 1040, we can see that the dependents are listed down here, name, social security number, relationship, and then checking the benefit that we're gonna get, which will be shown on page two of the form 1040, either the child tax credit typically or the credit for other dependents. And then on page two, we've got the uh, tax calculation, which could be impacted, the child tax credit uh, up top, and then you could have a refundable portion of it down below as well. Okay, again, these are some of the additional factors. So if you wanna take a look at the general thought process for whether or not someone qualifies as a dependent, look at the prior presentation. Now we're expanding on some of the definitions that you might need to drill down on in special situation. All right, so an adopted child. As we saw before with the filing statuses, an adopted child is always treated as your own child. An adopted child includes a child lawfully placed with you for legal adoption. Adoption uh, taxpayer identification number, otherwise known as the ATINs. So if they're adopted, we know that of course you need the number, social security number, or at least some kind of identification number. If they're adopted, that means you might have an adoption taxpayer identification, an ATIN, A-T-I-N. So if you have a dependent who was placed with you for legal adoption and you don't know the dependent's SSN, you don't have their social security number, you must get an A-10 for the dependent from the IRS. You can see form W-7A for details. If the dependent isn't a U.S. citizen or resident alien, apply for an I-10 instead using form W-7. Children of divorced or separated parents. Now, here's where the messiness often comes in because the, chil the child, the children often have a significant impact as we can see on the tax return. So who can claim the children for taxes can become a point of contention, which is something that would be best to set up as soon as possible instead of kind of fighting over it at the point of time when you're actually filing the tax returns, which could be a messy situation. So a child will be treated as the qualifying child or qualifying relative of the child's non-custodial parent defined later if all of the following conditions apply. So number one, the parents are divorced, legally separated, uh, separated under a written separation agreement or lived apart at all times during the last six months of 2023, whether or not they were married. Number two, the taxpayer received over half of the child's support for 2023 from the parents and the rules of rules on multi-support agreements later don't apply. Support of a child received from a parent's spouse is treated as provided by the parent. Three, the child is in custody of one or both of the parents for more than half of 2023. Number four, Either of the following applies. A, the custodial parent signs form 8332 or a substantially similar statement that they won't claim the child as a dependent for 2023 and the non-custodial parent includes a copy of the form or statement with their return. 